Uh, now I would request Dr. Shugato to come and uh, talk on OT sterilization. He's an expert who's been working in various places, including England and UK, and now a leading consultant in Calcutta. Uh, good morning, and thank you. So uh, thanks, Ang Shuman, for including me in this IC. I'll be speaking on OT sterilization and uh, maintenance. So why, why do we need a clean OT? It has been seen that sterile environment reduces the surgical site infection, and surgical site infection are the second most commonest cause of hospital acquired or nosocomial infection. And it, is co it causes considerable morbidity and can lead to high mortality. The sources of SSI can be endogenous or exogenous. Now, exogenous sources are from surgical personnel, from the pointer, from the operating room environment, and can be also from the tools and instruments which are being used in the operating field. So uh, if you see the operating room environment is a factor, and if we can maintain the sterile environment in the operation theater, we can control major part of the exogenous infection. So what is more important? Is it cleaning or disinfection and sterilization? Actually, both have their importance. Cleaning removes the contaminants, dust, and the organic matters, whereas disinfection reduces the number of the microbes. Now, disinfection of the OT is done with three uh, level of disinfection, high, intermediate, and low. High level uh, kills the organism, accepts the uh, spores and prions, and it is affected as sterilants, which has glutaraldehyde-based or orthoptaldehyde-based agents, which are available in India. And there is intermediate and low-level disinfection as well. So uh, OT cleaning and disinfection can be of two types. When you are having a new OT, setting up a new OT, and uh, in a running OT as well. So in a new OT, you have to, it's a very rigorous step. You have to first ensure all the civil work has been completed. All the civil work has been completed completed and ensure all the movable equipments have been shifted out and cleaned outside the OT. Then you have to wipe all the surfaces of the OT and all fixed equipments such as OT lamps with liberal amount of soap and water and repeat the watering, uh, wiping until all the visible dusts are removed and it should be dried. This mechanism of wiping actually is very important to remove the spores and improve the action of the disinfectants which are used subsequently. So the next step is using disinfectants and it uh, basically with the disinfectants all the surface are wiped again and it's allowed to dry completely. Then the equipments which were moved out and cleaned outside are moved inside the OT and the wiping is repeated again and it's, then it's allowed to be dry. Once this is dry, uh, we have to think of fogging the AC, uh, uh, fogging the OT if we are not using HVAC system. And then we have to take the swab after one and a half hours, one to two hours of the fogging. Swabs ha has to be taken from OT table surface, OT lights, uh, then the sterile instrument trolley, anesthetic machine, two walls, floor, and also from the air conditioned lower. After the OT sampling done on the first, uh, on the second day, uh, uh, you have to clean the OT, uh, you have to um, uh, close the OT for the next day, till next day, and next day, repeat the same procedure again and take swab again. And again on the third day, repeat the same procedure. This is for a new OT. Once you get the report back, you have to ensure all the samples are free um, of any growth, or there might be some spurs, skins, common cell growth. If there are any growth of pathogens, then you have to repeat the process of OT cleaning and fogging once more and take samples again. If the results are still not satisfactory, then you have to take help of infection control expert. So in a running OT, what we do? We have to clean the roof, the floor, the walls, the roof, it require, doesn't require regular cleaning. Actually, it requires cleaning when the remodeling is done, as I have described, or when good amount of dust is accumulated. On the other hand, the floor gets contaminated quickly, and they require cleaning quite often. 
And you should remember not to use a dry mop because it can spread the aerosol or not to use the broom. You should use wet cleaning techniques and floors should be decontaminated with vacuum cleaners. The OT has to be cleaned on the first before the surgery starts and it's uh, basically irrespective of whether there is be OT running on the day or not and no one should enter before it's cleaned. Clean all the horizontal surfaces with white wiping with high level disinfectant and ensure all the waste collection box are in place. Then keep the OT closed for 10-15 minutes with the ventilation on and then you are ready for the OT. In between the uh, procedure also, ideally, there should be some cleaning process, especially during the COVID time, we were quite rigorous in that. So clean the operation table, the theater equipment with disinfectant solution like detergent. And in cases of spillage of blood or body fluid, decontaminate with chlorine solution. Always discard the waste in, di in the prescribed plastic bags and don't accumulate soil, gown or biohazard waste in the, what in the operation theater and damp mop the floor uh, for a radius of three to four feet around the OT table in regular interval. And at the end of the day also there should be a rigorous cleaning and at that time ensure that the OT table is moved and the undersurface of the OT table is cleaned with high level disinfectant like bacillosid. So the cleaning has to be done in a methodical way. It should be in one direction around the room it should be from high to low surface, should be from clean to dirty area. So the cleaner area should be clean first and from back to front or farthest away to the closest area. Now coming to the fumigation. In India, as you all know, there are extreme OT facilities ranging from rooms with fans, then uh, window air conditioning, and there are more sophisticated laminar air flow system. As you all know, most hospital, district hospital, they do not have the air handling unit or HVAC unit as Supriya has described. And in this situation, the quality of the air is cannot be guaranteed. Now, so we uh, actually divide the OT disinfection in two categories. One, the OT with HVAC system and the other in OT without HVAC system. For HVAC system, uh, it helps in, as uh, Dr. Singh has mentioned, to maintain the indoor air temperature and humidity. Uh, control the odor, remove the contaminated air, and minimize the risk of transmission of airborne microorganism. And airborne unit with AHU and HEPA filters uh, and laminar airflow can further help in maintaining the asepsis and infection control. So, fogging is not required when you have a OT with HVAC system, but in this situation, you have to ensure that the ventilation system design is appropriate and the system performance is validated during the installation and at least once a year. All parameters in every validation testing should be within the permissible limit. You have to ensure that. And maintenance of the ventilation system and the air handling unit should be done once in a year. And HEPA filter should be changed at time intervals recommended by the manufacturer or based on the results of the validation test. Weekly air counting should be done with settle plates or air samplers and results should be within the acceptable limits. And because you are not fogging the OT with HVAC system, cleaning of the OT is of utmost importance and you should ensure that all the staff are aware how to clean and there should be a protocol as I have described earlier. Now coming to fogging and fumigation. We all know the origin of fogging is uh, traced back to 19th century when Joseph Lister aerosolized the carbolic acid to improve the antiseptic in the operation theater. It is done with formaldehyde vapor, vapor which is produced on low temperature and heating. And the mechanism is to alkalize the amino acid and sulfur drill group of proteins and purine bases. It is widely used, but you all should know that it is hazardous and carcinogenic, but is being used because it's cheap. What we do here, is basically there are two types. One is uh, to use the electric boiler fumigation system, where for 1,000 cubic feet of OT, 500 ml of formalin is added to 1,000 ml of water in an electric boiler, and the boiler is switched on for 45 minutes to create the formaldehyde. And the second method is potassium permanganate method, where 1,000 for 1,000 cubic feet of OT, 450 
um, uh, gram of potassium permanganate is uh, added to 500 ml of formalin and the room is sealed and left for 48 hours. Residuals formaldehyde gas can be neutralized by using ammonia. Now we are, as the awareness is increasing, we are moving away from fumigation to fogging in OT where there is no HVAC system. Here the formalin is being replaced with safer agents such as aldehyde based product, glutaraldehyde and the advantage is that they have deep, not only they have deep penetration capacity, there is no known resistance strain and they are effective against all sort of organisms. So here what we do is basically we use the Fogger system, we prepare the solution according to the manufacturer's recommendations such as bacillosid and we add uh, 20 ml of bacillosid in 2 m, um, uh, liters of distilled water and place the fogger in one corner of the OT with the nozzle directed at 45 degree to the opposite side and start the fogger. We have to notice that un uh, we have to notice whether the fog is uh, there in the atmosphere of the OT through the uh, OT window and once the fog is seen you can switch up the fogger and wait for half an hour to one hour. Now once the fogging is done you have to, one more minute, you have to inspect for uh, any wet patches after opening the OT. If there are any wet patches you have to, don't wipe them, you have to let them dry naturally. And you have to also check whether the working surface has excessive stickiness. If there is excessive stickiness then you have to check the uh, dilution of the, the fog, fogging uh, material and if it still persists then you can reduce the fogging time by few minutes. Now these are the some commonly used disinfectants which are normally used in India and how they work and we normally use bacillosid which is formaldehyde free and uh, it can be used in white wipe procedure. The process provides complete asepsis within 60 minutes and formalin fumigation is not required when you are using this. The other one is EcoShield which is also commonly used. It uses uh, stabilized hydrox hydrogen peroxide solution on silver test solution. Again, it has a widespread action and this table actually shows how often we will clean the surfaces and what sort of uh, solution is ideal uh, and should be followed. Thank you very much for your patient hearing.